Now, as a car owner, you can probably relate to this. There's these noises that everyone hears and they turn their head instantly when they hear them, such as someone dropping plates inside a restaurant or the security alarm has gone off at a clothes shop at the entrance to it. And also the noise of someone trying to start the car and it continually turning over and it never starting. And yes, that's exactly the issue I have got with my trusty wee Ibiza here. The project car, I got back on the road, clean bill of health for its MOT, but now I'm having this warm start issue where when I try and start the car, after I've stopped it for a few minutes of a had a long journey, it won't start as quickly. It does finally start, but it takes ages to turn over. And that's exactly what I mean. Sitting in your car, turning the key, everyone looking at you thinking, oh, that car's not gonna start. And it finally started, luckily, but I hopefully want to fix it in this video. And hopefully this thing here, starter motor, will fix the issue. I've looked into it, I'll explain later on why this might actually fix it. You know, the starter motor on my car is working, but there's a reason it might not actually be making the car kick into life. Uh, I have had a lot of help through you guys on YouTube from the last Ibiza video, saying it could be the crankshaft sensor or the camshaft sensor. I did replace them, didn't fix it at all, sadly still. It takes ages to start once it's warm. But before we get into this, changing over the starter motor, because that will be the next job in the car, I want to run through a few things that I've fixed on the car since then, niggling issues that were bothering me, and I kind of left it a bit open at the end of the last video and never cleared it up. So the brakes had been spongy since day one, since getting the car back on the road. And the brakes being spongy was, in the end, it was because the ABS module brake system needed bled. And you can do that through OBD11 or other diagnostic tools. You can get the pump of the ABS pump to start pumping as you're doing the brake bleeding at the same time. And this releases the last bit of air that's trapped inside the top of the ABS pump. Otherwise it sits there and it only kind of gets pushed into the system once the engine's running, once you're on the road, and that's why you feel this kind of spongy feeling through the brakes. So that was a massive difference to the brakes straight away. The brakes now are perfect, really sharp, and there's no more spongy pedal. The rear ABS sensor decided to pack in, luckily just after the MOT, so it kept the fault light off the dashboard until the MOT had been done. And then about a week later, this wee sensor packed in completely and I had to get a new one, but I think it was like a 10 quid or something, really cheap, easy to replace as well. And straight away that took the light off the dashboard once it was reset. Now I have splashed out on this kit here, which is a vacuum pump and these gauges as well. Now this was because the air conditioning wasn't working. It's obviously a 17 year old car, so there's a good chance the air conditioning is not gonna be the tip top, top condition. But using that kit and regassing it with the correct gas and the correct amount, it is stone cold. It's way colder than my Leon and even colder than the wife's uh, Renault Kajar, which is what, five years old. Now I had mentioned that the wipers were stuck initially. They'd been seized the very start of getting the car because it'd been sat for about a year and a half off the road and the wiper linkage had seized up. So I decided that moving the wiper as I was trying to like use the wiper stock and move them back and forth, a bit of WD-40 would free them up and it did work. But every time I left the car for a couple of days, it would go really slowly again, it would start to seize up. Turned out the wiper linkage was severely corroded inside. All the wee pivot points stuck together and not moving freely anymore. So I ordered a second hand linkage off eBay with a motor as well for 30 quid or something, quite cheap, and made sure all those joints were nicely lubricated and free, switched them over and now it's perfect. Just as a small side note here, whenever you do wiper linkages or wiper motors, you usually have to remove this nut and then the wiper arm. The wiper arm will always be stuck on, so you need to get yourself a wiper puller. The first one I bought, well, basically it was rubbish. So for a couple of quid more, I got this one instead, and it's way stronger and a lot more fit for the job, so I'd recommend this one. I'll leave a link in the description for you. So now for getting this starter motor changed over and then we'll test to see if it actually works in fixing this warm start issue. Starter motor is just down inside there, so we'll just get off the airbox, the battery, get that all the way and then we'll get this starter motor off. It seems like someone's been here before because the wee red clip on the electrical plug was broken. Anyway, with the power disconnected, it was time to disconnect the earthing cables. Using this electric ratchet just saves time as we go. Then to remove the two long bolts that hold the starter onto the car, one up on the top and one underneath. These were really tight, so I used a beefy impact wrench and this was used to break them free. Then I just dropped it out the bottom of the car. So there we go, the old one off versus the new one, nice and shiny. Uh, we have 10 teeth on the end here of the starter motor on the new one and we have 10 teeth on the old one so they match up perfectly but even if these don't you can get different numbers of teeth on these starter motors uh, it doesn't actually matter because it will still it gets offset so the center of the shaft gets offset depending on the number of teeth that's on the cog and that then makes sure that it matches up inside the engine all right and there's no issues now the reason that these starter motors 
can be the reason for the engine not starting is because once the engine knows it's been run a bit, the coolant temperature is up to a certain threshold, it needs to have at least 250 revs per minute or revolutions per minute to get the compression up possibly inside the engine. I'm not too sure in the science behind it, but you need to pass that 250 mark when the engine's turning over to get the car to start uh, properly. And after realizing this issue when I read it online, I was watching the revs then when I was starting it from cold and starting it once it was warmed up as well. And it was barely reaching 250, sometimes not getting anywhere near it at all. And if it's not doing that when the engine's been ran and it's looking for that threshold that there's now like a warmer temperature in the engine, it needs to hit that 250 mark to get that compression working, to get the engine started, hence why the old one wasn't doing it. So hopefully this new one has got the power behind it to start the engine now by getting it past that 250 limitation. Keep seeing all my videos these things are brilliant honestly it saves you rattling your hands going backwards and forwards a ratchet this just does it for you you put it in you click that button and it's just saves so much time this is reasonably cheap as well i'll leave a link down below in the description if you want to get get one yourself because yeah this has saved me so much time when it comes to working in tight space and you can't quite get a lot of movement with the ratchet you spit this in instead and it either tightens or loosens bolts and that's super quick so the moment of truth it's all back together has the new starter fixed this issue So this is usually where it's doing the issue. So the engine is, although it's not showing warm, the engine's warm. So normally when I start the car now, after being stopped for a few minutes or even just a few seconds, this would take a few seconds at least to start. Straight away, into life, no bother at all. So now I can confidently start the Ibiza uh, in a crowded car park once it's warmed up and it will start no bother and not continually turn over like it used to. Thanks everyone that has suggested other problems that might be, and I did try that as well, and they were the best ones to try first because they were the cheaper options. So I do appreciate everyone's help beforehand. If you are missing content on the Leon, it does still feature on the channel. It's just I've had to get all these niggling issues sorted in Ibiza to make sure I've got confidence in driving the car day to day. Now it does make sense that I just sell the Ibiza now and try and get some money back that I've spent on it and just maybe put that towards something else. But as always, I couldn't help myself. Quick glance down there. Yes, there's a few boxes there for the Ibiza and that'll be coming in future videos. And finally, if you are wanting to see your most recent video on the Leon, which has featured in a massive road trip, uh, three videos for a road trip around the North Coast 500, I document the whole thing. It was me and five mates. We did it, really good laugh, all recorded, quite long videos, but yeah, if you want to think about doing this route yourself, the ideal videos to watch, to know what to expect, and maybe you can plan it out yourself as well, using the videos. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button down below to catch more videos from Channel in Future regarding the Ibiza and the Leon, and I'll see you next time, cheers.